Welcome to Belmont Journal here at Belmont Media Center. I'm Steve Rosales, this week's host, and today we're chatting with Henry Mahoney, who has just completed a decades-long career as Queen of Capital here in Belmont as chair and longtime member of the Capital Budget Committee. Now, we know Anne Marie from her flashy outfits, her pithy quotes, <laughs> and her vast knowledge, sometimes on dry subjects. But she has a fun side. Look at the stuff here. You might be wondering, hmm, what does this have to do with Anne Marie Mahoney? Well, we're going to find out. Anne Marie, there's an interesting collection of. I brought some show odds and tell. And right, because I thought when we talked last night, you said, well, what are you going to do with your time now that you're off capital budget? And I thought, let me bring some things to share. So, over the last few years, I have been doing some fencing, and I didn't think bringing the foil through Waverly Square was a good idea, so this is my fencing glove, and that is a lot of fun. You need a little hat. A lot of fun. Uh, th yeah, but that it's too big it. to bring. I have it. It's too big to bring. <laughs> More recently, thanks to the Women's Club Dancing with the Stars, which we hope goes forward in the future, I've been doing dancing lessons, and I love it. It is so relaxing. These are like the black version of, uh, of so click fun. the heels together. That's what, the black version of those. Right. You have little feet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but the dancing is great. It's, it's very relaxing, really. And, you, you know, you get a lot of energy out. But here's the real challenge. My mother and my sister, awesome, awesome knitters. Somehow I miss that gene. And so one of my goals with my new free time is to finally learn how to knit. This is as far as I've gotten so far. No, so see, that's, I, I, we're, we're back in person. Maybe I'll go to the library or the senior center or somewhere. I'm going to learn how to knit. What is, it, this, what is this starting to be? I, I, who knows? <laughs> I'm just practicing. It's, it's nothing. Well, I don't know. It looks to be like the beginning of a scarf to me. That's <laughs> uh, a short one, but that's okay. Very short, yes. All right. Well, there you go. Well, I'm glad you have a fun. See, these are little I things do. that no one knows. And I have a grandchild who's nine. And I want to be able to see some of his soccer games and get involved in some of his activities. But they're up in New Hampshire, and so I've never had a block of time to do that. Hopefully now I do. There you go. And then you can hang out. I know you have a place that you love up there in New Hampshire I by do. the water, very relaxing, peaceful. I do. And do your reading and reflecting. I do. Yes, yes. Good for you. Well, all right. I guess now we'll dive into the, the boring part of town politics, I right. guess. Have you, fun. have you felt a weight now off your shoulders, having given your final capital budget report? I definitely have. No more slides, no more presentations, no more researching quotes. Next trash day, there's going to be a lot on my sidewalk. Come on, you can't throw <laughs> everything all out. No, I'll I'm keep sure a few things. There's a lot of history there. <laughs> there I'm sure is. you've, done, oh, you've yeah. done it a long time. <laughs> I have been on the capital budget committee for 15 years, and I have chaired the committee for 10. So, yeah, it's been a while. For Time ten. for a change. But yet that's not your that's not your your only service that you're given the town. Full scope of my service, no. I was elected uh, to town meeting in Precinct 1 in 1986 and then to the school committee in 1988. So I've been doing something for the town actively since 1986. Or as I like to say to people, I was elected to the school committee when I was 36 years old. I had a birthday last November. I'm 70. I think it's time to pack it in. You know, that was a question. That was the third wheel question. I was not going to ask you how oh, old you are, but well, now I'm, that you volunteered I'm happy it, to share. you don't like a day over 48. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so town meeting, and well, you know, we chatted, but we've known each other a long time. We have. And we both have our pictures on sort of the wall of I don't know if it's achievement or the wall of shame in the selectman's room. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yours is a lot more photogenic than mine. <laughs> but uh, uh, in any event, um, we did chat in preparation of this, and I found it interesting that your career in service to Belmont can be sort of historically timelined through its buildings. Yes. <laughs> through its buildings and how they've come and gone. Some have gone and some have come. <laughs> That's right. Um, so why don't you, so you started, you said town meeting in the mid-80s. Yep. What drew you to that? Well, uh, my husband had been a town meeting member in Precinct 1 for quite a while before we got married. And when we moved back to Precinct 1 onto Golden Street and, you know, I had my kids and I had a little bit of free time, not much, I thought that I wanted to get involved, so I ran and I got elected. <clears throat> Well, there you go. Right. The rest is history. It was a little different uh, uh, back then. It was before uh, 
you know, audio visuals, I would think, and right. before PowerPoints before that, and certainly before all these Zoom virtual things. Oh, right, right. You met in the uh, somewhat modern high school, which is now no longer there, right? No. Well, for town meeting, yes, yes, in the high school, yes. But initially on the school committee, we met in the school administration building in that conference room. So, yeah, no cameras, nothing. Sometimes a reporter in the corner, that was it. Well, you know, so, so and then you went on to the school committee. So what... Yeah. What was happening around that? What, well, I'll ask you that. What, what promoted you then from town meeting at 36 years old with, I assume, growing kids oh, yeah. and a family to grow uh, to now run for the school committee, which is probably the most thankless job, in my opinion, out there? It was tough, <laughs> and yet, right, I hung on for 12 years. You know, we can debate how smart I was to do that. Um, I had four children slowly getting into the schools. There was a lot happening at the time, financially, some unrest about the superintendent, and I thought, well, you know, maybe I have something to contribute. So I ran and I won. Um, but I would say, as you started to allude to earlier, a lot of my career has been bracketed by building projects, and I think that's what got me so interested in capital budget. When I got onto the school committee, the Winbrook and Burbank additions and renovations were taking place and finished up a couple of years after I got onto the school committee. So you're involved in the renovation of those. I went to the Winbrook School, and, and it was when I went, the new wing was the 1957 wing. There you go. But, uh, so that was what? That was mid, mid-80s, I would well, think. Well, seems they, like yesterday. They started at the end of the 80s, and they finished up around uh, 1990, right? And then from there, we went into the Chenery middle school project and I was very uh, interested in that and kind of pushed very hard with a lot of other support to get that building done and it, it took us a while you know feasibility study we, we lost the first uh, debt exclusion vote but we came back 18 months later and it passed so there you have it. Well while the Winbrook and Burbank uh, renovations were, were planned so yes. to speak the, the, the Chenry project was not right. Well, well, planned in that we had filed the plans with the state in June, the middle of June, 1995, and July 9th, a month later, that school burned down. That burned down. So that jumped us to the head of the line and accelerated, and we just, you know, went right into it. I was on the building committee. We started right away, and we were able to open that school in September of 1997. So two years and two months start to finish. Which was, what was the biggest challenge in that, other than the fact that it burned down and you had to figure out what to do with all the students? That was it. I think the biggest challenge wasn't the building or the construction itself. It was relocating those students. And as you know, we did that on a uh, swing session at the high school with some modulars. That was very difficult because you had to do that between July 9th and September 8th or 9th or whatever it was that year. You had two months to plan that and make it work. What was that year, 1995? 95. 95. And it pretty much did which was, phew, what a relief. <laughs> I was, I, was uh, I don't know, two months into my term as board of, uh, member of the Board of Selectmen. There you now go. Now select board. Yeah. I slip into the old. I'm well, old. and at that point, then I had all, all four of my children down there, two in the high school piece and two in the middle school piece. So, yeah, I was very involved. Well, yeah, the double sessions were a pain. I, I, I was out of the school by that time, but we had similar double sessions when the the, the, Orchard uh, the high school burned, burned down, which is now the Wellington, but it was the high school, and I started there, and that burned down, and we did yep, double I sessions, I think, from 7 in the morning till noon, and then 12.30 to 5, or some some cockamamie thing where you had right. to shuffle around. I remember we did that for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Well, it burned in 1967. I lived across the street. I watched it burn down. So it's always in my brain. And then the, the new one opened in... February of 1971. Yeah, I guess that's what it, I was. I, I was the last graduating class out of, of ninth grade of the then junior high. Right. And then right. we did double sessions, and I came in in middle of tenth February of my tenth grade year. Yep. So that was interesting. Now yeah. it's no longer. Now it's just a distant memory. Right. Right. I don't know. It's gone. We, that's a conversation for another day. It's not for today. So uh, well, what else was going on? You served in the school committee. Yep. It was must have been an easy time. It was a piece of cake. Nothing much happened. Earlier in that year, before the fire, we had the Belmont teachers strike in January. That was fun. Um, and that was, you know, if you asked me what was the most challenging time in all of my government service, it would, it would be that strike. That was very, very hard. And it was hard on my family. I mean, it's one thing if it's just you 
but when your four children are in the schools and the teachers are on strike, <coughs> that that was ugly. And in some ways, my children have never forgiven me for that. That was very. Why hard. would they blame you for being on strike? It was just so disruptive, and so you know, I they felt like they were targeted as as my kids. It was hard. Well, okay. Well, I suppose everything changes. Time, and, you know, time, everything's always evolve. I mean. I suppose you could make an argument now the toughest part is virtual class. Who would ever thought of virtual class and not going to school for a whole year, however long they were out of class? Yeah, you right, know, In right. everybody's bedroom wearing a mask or doing this and watching a computer. Yeah, um, yeah, it's crazy. But, uh, but, but we survived that strike. We won't get into good strike talk, but, uh, but, no, but we it, survived got, it got figured out. We got through the didn't, fire and the relocation. Didn't the schools and continue? Didn't we have uh, volunteer sure did. teachers? We didn't shut down, if I remember no, correctly. No, we did not. No, we were able, because it was January, to get a lot of volunteers of college kids at home, college professors available. And, right, we staffed the schools. We got credit from the state. We kept things going. And it resolved, and then, you know. We moved we, on. We moved on. Right. So right. I hope things resolve and move on. I hope but, so, too. Uh, you know, I'll let the powers that be figure that. I'm just a private citizen. That's not As us. you will be soon. Yes, yes. If not already. Yeah. I think that one more session. You, we'll one see you one more meeting. time. Yeah, right. We'll see you one more night, and uh, uh, that'll work. So, okay, so school committee, you did that 12 years. Yep. Okay. And uh, and during that, were you helping with, were you on the Chenry Building Committee at that point, too? I was, yes. I was on the Chenry Building Committee, and because I was available a lot, Pat Bruce and I were there every week for the site meetings, so I was very involved in a lot of the nitty-gritty of that project, yes, which was an education, but I think it also got me really interested in capital and buildings and, and projects like that. So were you involved, uh, you were on the school committee during the Winbrook Burbank, were you involved in that building process no, too? I, no, no. I just came on as a school committee member. Okay, but, but you were... But obviously certainly getting reports my interest. And, and figuring yes. it out, right? And touring it as as those buildings were being constructed, we got to tour. That yes. must have been a good learning process. It was. It was. It was good groundwork then for the Chenery. Okay. And then a then school burned and then you're boom, now you're a school expert. Yeah. And that got done. And so now well, we probably need to upgrade that building at that point this point. It's been it's a bunch of years. Twenty right? five years. Yep. It'll be twenty five years in September. So you're looking at a new roof, new H V A C rooftop units, uh, you know, new uh, systems in the building, uh, probably some work on that elevator, flooring. It's time. But behind that or, or ahead of it in line really are those Burbank, Winbrook and Butler elementary schools that have been done in the late 70s and late 80s. They're going to need some significant work. We tried on capital budget, we've tried to keep up. We've replaced heating systems, we've replaced windows, we've replaced a lot of systems like fire alarm and PA and those kinds of things. But at some point, they're going to need some significant work. Well, there's a lot of people that complain. I'm probably one of them that we don't put enough I didn't maintenance. Wa I didn't want to say that. Well, I, I, I'm one of them and I'm not alone. I don't think I'm a voice in the wilderness when we look at the library and we look at the what now is the former new high school, new yeah. when I was there, and should still be, was referred to always as the new high school right. until it's no longer in existence. But, uh, uh, but you know, we, we have a town hall that's probably from the 1800s. I was involved in the Homa building, that's from the 1800s, yeah. and they're all still in existence. So, uh, you know, upkeep. But well, right, yeah, I got onto the select board as those projects were starting and was a little bit instrumental in saving the Homer building because the original plan was just knock it down and it just felt like oh my god that's a really historic building you can't just take that down and I you know I got a lot of grief for that but in the end we saved it and I think the project is is a beautiful outcome both interior and exterior. Well, I was on that building committee I served some great people and I had really no expertise but I learned a lot Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've been on committees with you, too, so I'm not right. shy about facing my opinion whether not you like all. it or not. But uh, Well, and you have a whole staircase in the police station true. dedicated to you. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's, at least it's not the Steve Rosales Memorial Stairs. No, it's just the Rosales Stairs. But we'll take a quick, a quick, a quick uh, uh, editorial aside here. What is she referring to is that we just built, and we'll get to it in a minute, The we just redid the new Belmont police station. Well, the old police station that's now we've been refurbished yeah. and rebuilt, and modernized for the next 50 years. And if you did not know, there was a second floor where the chief and a lot of the offices were. And there was only one stairway up and one stairway down. 
the 21 the, steps. The same one, the same steps. 21 stairs. No second way out. And no lie, if there was a fire up there and those stairs were blocked, there literally was some kind of a rope ladder yeah, that they would throw out of the chief's, the chief's office. office window. <laughs> and everybody was expected to climb down a ridiculous rope ladder to escape a fire. I don't know how we could get away with, with one way in and one way out. That was crazy. But so I insisted, to some objection of my fellow committee members, to put in a stairway, a back stairway, which they have called now the Rosales Stairs. But uh, uh, and anyway, they're there. They're safe. They're functional. As long as they're it's great. not the memorial stairs, because I'm still drawing breath. They're great. Thank the, thank the, thank the Lord above. But uh, anyway, coming on back. So, uh, so, so, where are we? You've done the middle school. Right. I okay, got on so to now them. you're all done. Now you're off the school committee. Yep. You left by choice. Twelve years is enough. Okay, once, once enough. the middle school opened, yes, I, w I was. Your done. kids out of school Time by then. Move on. Two of them were. I'm trying to think. Two of them were, yes, and two were still at the high school when okay. I got off. Right, yeah, when All I right. got off the school committee. All right, so now you're footloose and fancy free. All right, for Just about town meeting, five minutes. Up. Okay, well, what happened? Well, Bill Skelly decided not to run for select board for re-election, and people approached me and said, "Well, it looks like you're getting off the school committee. Why don't you run for select board?" Oh, could I? So I did, unopposed which was a good thing. I didn't have to spend any money. It's because the job is so sought after. Right. So I got onto the select board and right away, as we said, building projects. The town hall, Homer building, school administration building, and now we're dealing with historic buildings. So that became sort of another dimension in the building process for me, the whole historic piece, which I enjoyed and I loved working with the historic district people like Lydia, Lydia Ogilby, you know, Mike Smith, all of those people, they're great. Well, you know, they, they did. They do have foot, footsteps and footprints, as Dick Beth would say. Through Absolutely. they made their own footprints through uh, through Belmont, and hopefully those that come behind them. Yes. Okay. The next generation uh, will, will form their own footsteps and uh, carry on those traditions and keep those historical perspectives. I fought tooth and nail in some of that Homer building because I thought some of that stuff was rather ridiculous, but. But uh, in any event, it all came out okay. Chocolate vanilla. Uh, that's true. Well, that's Bill Monahan told yep. me that. I use, you say it all the time. That's yep. why they make chocolate <laughs> and vanilla. So, uh, and every once in a while, you know, if you get the swirl in the middle sometimes, yeah, it all can... it tastes just as sweet if you can mix it. So, uh, uh, so you did that, and what else was going on then? Or you, you, you left there, you stepped down from that one I point. I stepped down for a variety of reasons, some personal family issues, um, but also I, I had an opportunity to earn a master's degree part-time at Boston College with some significant financial aid from Boston College. And so I could do it and owe nobody nothing. And so I did, you know, it took me four years and I was in my mid-50s, but I did it. And that helped me in the work I was doing, and you know it was a diversion and whatever. So I enjoyed that. Um, at the time, my two older children were deployed to war zones constantly, and so this was sort of you know a distraction that was good for me, and I loved it. Yeah, they both went to West Point. They're all had stellar careers. Well, one's still in, right? One's, my daughter one's is still in. One's Lieutenant still in. Colonel. Yep. She's doing cyber Who warfare. salutes who when she comes home? She still salutes They're you. They're equal so. rank, my son and my daughter. Well, how about but, you? Oh, yes. well, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. just mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just mom, I'm sure, though. You have, <laughs> yeah, right. you, you have the ultimate uh, power, I would think, right? Right, right. Well, that's good, because you can never argue with mom. No. Um, okay, so okay, so now you're all done. Which, which job do you like better? Please, uh, the, the school or the select board? Select board. Probably the school, I found select board a little more challenging and less interesting, at least for me. I wasn't all that interested in granite curb and dogs and, and those kinds of issues it seemed that we were constantly dealing with. It was more interesting to be dealing with curriculum and school issues for me. But still, I learned a lot. As we talked last night, I went into federal court to defend the town, you know, on a lawsuit. I was in Middlesex court. So I had a lot of kind of very interesting experiences on the well, select Well, it board. is interesting. The worst was the barking dog cases, though. Oh, God. 
Right. Those right. are the worst. That's neighbor versus neighbor, both of which I know or you know, because you know everybody. It's it's a you know it's a big town, but it's a small town. Exactly. So everybody knows somebody, and you have two neighbors. My that dog barks too much. That dog's in my yard, and you're that supposed to do something. That dog bit my child. Yeah. Oh, you know, and that's how I ended up in court. It's the court. worst. But right. anyway, right. <laughs> anyway. Right. All right. So, so now you're 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 studied. You've done your studies. You got your masters. You're no longer on the select board. You got oodles of time. Right. So Henry Hall gets in so touch with me now? and says... So you shouldn't answer the phone, apparently. I shouldn't. And that was before, you know, email and texting was, was really popular. So Henry Hall calls and says, hey, Anne Marie, you've got a lot of experience. You want to come on to Capital Budget? And I thought, oh, I do love those buildings. So I said yes. And that was around 2007. So yeah, I got on to Capital Budget and, you know, still here. But, you know, within that, we were able to talk a lot about capital projects in town and what are our priorities and how do we deal with the funding and how do we make good choices and long-range plans. And as a result of that, the high school got going, library got going, and DPW police got going. So, you know, that, w that was a good thing. Beach Street, was that in there before you Beach or not? Beach Street Senior kind Center. of happened after I got off the select board, although the fire stations happened while I was on the select board. I had a chance to advocate for the new fire stations as a select board member. Okay, so you were on that, but you weren't on the building committees no, at that point. No, 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 no. So those were no. built. Okay, so as I said, it's starting. It's a timeline through the buildings. Building to building to building. And yeah, so in a way, this is a nice transition off because as you know, having shared the work with me, you know, we're closing out the finances on the police DPW finally in the next couple of weeks and we that's closed out, we're done. So building project done, capital budget done, on to other things. And that's of course, these are just buildings. I mean, you dealt with a lot of minutia too, like, uh, okay, I need, I need 20 radios or, uh, right. you know, and then you get into some, you know, you needed, you needed some uh, some vehicles. Yes. I particularly remember one. I don't know. You went capital budget when they wanted to replace the prisoner transport. No, the chief's car or something. They wanted to change. They wanted. They needed to purchase uh, the chief of police's car, and some town meeting member wanted the chief to ride to court in the the animal control vehicle. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, I was on capital budget for that. Yes, yes. Some Happy of it memories. does make for very interesting, memorable debate. A lot of. Yes, discussions a that you're, you're sitting there saying to yourself, why am I doing this? A lot of eye rolling, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so you've done this now for what? So you started in the mid-80s, 15 years. years. Okay, it's now 2022. You started in 84. Uh, you're, you're retiring your crown as capital. You're stepping down, remaining as town meeting member, I'm hoping. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. so out of all that, what are you most proud of? I think probably the police station. I mean, it's a tie between the Chenery and the police station because it was a tough push to get the Chenery passed. I think it came out beautifully. I love that building. Um, but I am really excited, genuinely excited about how the police station came out. You know, we, we managed to squeeze the additions on there. We did a beautiful job restoring the, ex the historic exterior and saving a lot of the history of the interior. You know, refinishing those original maple floors. You know, the, the door frames and the window frames, that kind of thing. I just love that project. And it came out and uh, no debt exclusion. No On debt budget. exclusion, right, around 12 million, give or take, no debt exclusion. We did a lot with that 12 million. Good for 50 years. Absolutely, absolutely With good. women's and, you know, well, both right. gender, both gender locker, locker rooms. rooms and the elevator, the nice bright space for offices and interviews and, and meeting with people. And security for the offices when they bring in the guests. As Into they call the them. sally port, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All so, the processing you know, area, the cells now up to standards from the state, absolutely. They didn't pass code for many years. No but, kidding. You know, not that any cell is any good place to be, but I guess there's, there's uncode worthy cells, I guess. <laughs> and we I have them, but now we don't. They're great. So, okay, so. Well, you, we did a good job. We'll give ourselves a collective pat on the back, sure. and, and without a dime out of taxpayers' extra money. So that okay. is that's a model, I think. I'd love that's to keep plus. that as a model. Well, and remember, we solicited a lot of donations, and people were very generous donating to the Richard J. Lane Cafe. Yeah, the Richard Lane Cafe. But and donating just in general because they saw it as a quality 
project and they wanted to be a part of it. So we okay. raised quite a bit of money. Well, we've done the positive part. Any, any, what was your most challenging? Or do you have any regrets or, or, or disappointments? What challenges? What was the most challenging? I think the most challenging was clearly the teacher strike. That, that was very hard. It was hard as a school community member. It was hard as a parent. And it was just hard as an, an individual, as a townsperson. Um, regrets? I, personally, not really. Um, I, I'm so grateful to all the people that I worked with who really, I mean, we were all part of a team, whether it was the building committee or capital budget. You know, I have to mention that while I get off, two long-term members and friends get off with me, Jenny Fallon and Becky, Foss, Becky Vos, who did, you know, yo, yo person duty with me as well on a variety of boards and committees and have worked very hard with capital and they too are finally saying uh, enough already, time to move on. You know, and I can't forget people like Pat Bruch who are still working hard on projects and who are, you know, have done an enormous amount of work for the town. So I, I think my only regret is just sort of the tone of things in the last few years has become a little contentious. But I think that's a function of the Zoom meetings. Uh, hopefully it gets more civil when we get back in person. Well, the, the, well, I think that is. I mean, I've often said that town politics everywhere is always contentious. Whatever the issue is in particular town, it's sort of all the right. same. You have two different sides, maybe three different sides, four different sides, right, and, right. and it all comes together. Um, it seemed to be easier back then, maybe in the 90s, because we didn't have, we had cable TV, that's what we had, right. but we didn't have internet, we didn't have uh, chat rooms, we didn't have uh, Twitter, oh. we didn't have any of that type of stuff. No. That seems to, I don't know, it seems to uh, fan the flames. Right, right, and I, I don't think that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it just makes it a little more difficult. Right. Uh, but uh, in the in the few minutes we had, a minute or so we have left, uh, what are your hopes? What, what are you what are you what are you advice to any successes? You're stepping down after a stellar career as the queen right. of capital. Right. Uh, what are what is my advice to people? Get involved, even if you think you're too busy. Get involved because it's your town, and you have the biggest impact financially on any other piece of your life at, at the town level. So get involved, uh, listen, get to know the people, get to know the department heads and the administration and all the wonderful people who work here, and be respectful. Well, there you go. That's that's good. That's okay. Words to live by. Nice. So, okay, you, you're wearing the yellow. I'm wearing the yellow tie. I did this for you because I know you. yellow is your favorite color. But you stand in front of town meeting and you wow town meeting and the town with quotes. Where do you get your quotes? Where do you call your quotes? I, I do a lot of Googling a lot. I was a high school English teacher, so I have kind of a lot in my head. And then I think of like a topic, what's going to go with what I'm presenting? And I'll do a little Googling and then I'll say, oh, yeah, that's a great one. Now, I've by default, I've ended up with a lot of Winston Churchill, uh, which Bob McLaughlin has loved. Uh, I don't know why, but he's, he's a great person to quote. Uh, this past town meeting, I had a little Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, you did. I've quoted Dr. Seuss, but my favorite, <laughs> favorite is the poet Mary Oliver, who was a contemporary po American poet who died a couple of years ago. And uh, the one thing then I will bring you as my quote for the today is, I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. So that's my wish for everybody. Get involved. Don't just be a visitor. Be a participant. What a wonderful way to top off the show with an Anne Marie Mahoney quote to live by. Thank you so much for the time. You're welcome. I've this enjoyed is our fun as always. This time, but it's only the beginning of the new chapter. We have a lot more time to do anywhere. this again. She's, not, she's still alive. She's not dead. So uh, I'm not. I'm so not. Uh, <laughs> stop and say hi and give her some more quotes. Right. Thanks, Anne Marie. <laughs> You're welcome. You've been watching Belmont Journal. Thank you for watching. I'm Steve Rosales. Until next time, take care.